Good morning and praise the Lord, beloved, once again. We thank God again for the gift of a new day. We thank God for his faithfulness that he gives us a new day each time. And we also thank him for giving us good health and always for the opportunity to hear his word because his word will always be a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. My name is Ali Solao and I love the Lord for he is my savior. I serve as a lay reader at the cathedral. Let us pray. Father, we are so grateful for the gift of a new day. Each time, O oh Lord, we are reminded of your love. We are reminded of your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity always to hear from you, O oh Lord. May you guide us, Jehovah. May you teach us. May you correct us. May you rebuke us. May you train us in righteousness. I commit myself to you, O oh Lord, and my viewers as well, and my hearers, Lord. Would you have your way in each and every one of us? We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Now we continue with this week's devo devotions on the role of Christians in uh, politics. On Monday, our focus was being on God's side, and we saw that Christians should consider getting more engaged in political matters of the nation, knowing that God cares deeply about his world and creation and the way it is run. We also saw that we can make a positive contribution by being on God's side, by willingly offering ourselves as instruments for his use and also upholding his standards wherever he has placed us. Yesterday, we reflected on taking position in prayer and uh, we were reminded that God intervenes in the lives of these people when they seek him in prayer and that, you know, Christians should pray for our leaders that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Today, we'll be looking at taking position in supporting the right candidate. As I'd mentioned, all through the week, we will be drawing our lessons from Judges 5, 1 to 12, and also Matthew uh, 5, 17 to 20, and we will be making references to, uh, to other scriptures. So allow me to read uh, the two passages, starting off with Judges 5, 1 to 12. On that day, Deborah and Barak, son of Abinomam, sang this song. When the princes in Israel take the lead, when the people willingly offer themselves, praise the Lord. Hear this, you kings. Listen, you rulers. I, even I, will sing to the Lord. I will praise the Lord, the God of Israel, in song. When you, Lord, went out from Seir, when you marched from the land of Edom, the earth shook, the heavens poured, the clouds poured down water, the mountains quaked before the Lord, the one of Sinai, before the Lord, the God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were abandoned. Travelers took to winding paths. Villages, villagers in Israel would not fight. They held back until I, Deborah, arose, until I arose, a mother in Israel. God chose new leaders when war came to the city gates, but not a shield or spear was seen among 40,000 in Israel. My heart is with Israel's princes, with the willing volunteers among the people. Praise the Lord. You who ride on white donkeys, sitting on your saddle blankets, and who you walk and you who walk along the road, consider the voice of singers at the watering places. They recite the victories of the Lord, the victories of his villages, villagers in Israel. The people of the Lord went down to the city, to the city gates. Wake up, wake up, Deborah. Wake up, wake up, break out in song. Arise, Barak. Take captive your captives, son of Abinoam. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Moving on to the passage in Matthew 5, 17 to 20. Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commandments and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commandments will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. And this is the word of the Lord. Uh, thanks be to God. Today we will see that Christians should seek God's heart and mind to enable them to identify and support the right candidate. 
Now, supporting the right candidate requires that we define who a right candidate is. And for us as Christians, our definition has to be drawn from God's eye view and through godly thinking. We've heard this phrase several times. And recently, we were also reminded in one of the homilies that choices have consequences. For example, we can't have food security in our country or even improve the healthcare of the citizens or even improve quality education and enhance security and create jobs or even bring down the cost of living if the government does not make all these a priority. The leaders we elect make decisions that respond to the many challenges that we face as a nation, including the ones that I've just listed. They can do this by enacting appropriate policies and programs. Romans 13, one to seven, underscores the importance of good governance and maintaining justice. Verse four of this passage says that rulers are God's servants to do as good and that they are agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrong, wrongdoer. Additionally, they give their full time to governing. Now the same passage outlines the role we need to play in, in supporting our leaders once they are in leadership. Verse one instructs all to submit to the governing authorities because they are established by God and to pay taxes to enable the government to run its mandates. As we prepare for election, will you take time to seek God's guidance to enable you identify the candidate to support? And be sure to know what their priority is and whether these are aligned to the challenges that the country is facing. Now in the scripture reading in Judges, verse five, Judges 5, verses six to seven, and as I mentioned yesterday, Israel was truly in an awful state until Deborah arose. Actually, Deborah did not just arise, the Lord called her. This tells us that the candidates we support need to be aligned to God's will. Now, when Jesus called the 12 disciples in Luke chapter six, verse 13 to 16, they probably did not comprehend the cost of following him and did not know the extent of suffering and sacrifice they would have to go through including torture and even death. Now, ultimately, what Jesus required of his followers was the willingness to give up everything for him. We certainly cannot compare following Jesus with service to the nation, but we can learn from the disciples the need for commitment wherever the Lord has placed us. As we support our leaders, let's evaluate how committed they are to the cause they stand for. Are they giving themselves for leadership because they want their own gain, or do they have the interest of the citizens at heart? Now, we also learn from our Heavenly Father on how to identify and support the right candidate by how he picked out David. When you go through 1 Samuel, verse six, uh, chapter 16, verse 6 to 10, God did not choose any of Jesus' older sons. As Samuel looked at the oldest son, Eliab, he probably thought, this man sure looks like a king. This must be the one God will tell me to anoint. So Samuel saw a tall, good-looking young man who looked like he would be a great king and leader. God, however, told Samuel not to look at Eliab's appearances or at the, or at the height of his stature because he had refused him. Samuel made the mistake of judging Eliab based on his appearance. Now, the Lord's response to Samuel was an exhortation to godly thinking. Samuel needed to know his natural inclination to judge only on outward appearance, but he didn't have to give in to it. He could seek the Lord and seek God's heart and mind when looking at people. And so this morning, my challenge is, will you heed God's call and look unto him to guide you in seeking out the right um, candidate? Now this passage says that rulers, God told Samuel, sorry, let me just go back. Will you, will, you, will you heed God's call and look unto God to guide you in seeking out the right candidate? God told Samuel that he had not chosen any of the sons of Jesse attending the feast. It wasn't that these sons of Jesse were bad men, but they were not God's choice. God had a man in mind different from Samuel or Jesse's expectation. While man looks at the outside appearance, the Lord looks at the heart. Even the best of men look at outward appearance. 
We must understand that we can't read the secrets of another's heart, and we often do only judge on outside appearance. Eliab and the seven oldest sons of Jesse were perfect potential kings as far as the flesh is concerned, but God didn't want a king after the flesh. Now, as we support the right candidate, we must allow our thoughts, we must allow our thoughts and actions to be governed by divine principles through prayer and action that is honest, is meek and charitable. We bring more evidence on God's harmonious government into our experience. It's up to each of us to choose integrity over our, over our convenient self-serving leadership and to choose intelligent reasoning over the impulsive highs and lows of emotions in every area of our lives. In this way, we will be able to discern the strong, enduring, helpful qualities of a candidate that is associated with godliness that Christ Jesus embodied. Godliness such as virtue, temperance, and brotherly kindness. And we can find that in 2 Peter 1, chapter 1, verse 1 to 10. Now from David, we can pick the following qualities that we could also use as a guide in ensuring we support the right candidate. We see faith in God and acknowledging God's sovereignty. Now, a leader should be a God-fearing man and should seek God's guidance in all authority that comes from him, as all authority comes from him. He should recognize that, they are, that they, are, they are servants of God and ultimately know that they are accountable to God. We should also look out for justice and fairness in the candidates that we support. Leaders must ensure that there is fair treatment of all, just like we see David. David was a good administrator, ad administrator and he never favored anyone. We also need to look out for humility in the candidates we choose to support. When David sinned, he was ready to ask for forgiveness from God. And so the leaders we choose, they should be able to accept mistakes and be willing to ask for forgiveness uh, as well as repent. They should also repent. We also see that David consulted the prophets of God in all his undertaking. As we support the right candidate, let's look out for this. A leader needs to recognize God's chosen servants, God's priests, pastors and cooperate with them and constantly ask God for guidance before undertaking any venture. Let's also look out for kindness. David had a forgiving heart towards some of the people who offended him. Even though he had an opportunity to kill Saul, he spared Saul's life as recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 10, by remembering that Saul was God's anointed and therefore leaders should be willing to accommodate those in the opposing side and forgive as need be. As we support the right candidates, let's look out for patriotism. They need to be patriotic. They need to be fully committed to promoting unity, love, and peace. And we also need to look out for their service. Are they serving with faithfulness, with loyalty, and with a shepherd heart like we have seen, we saw like um, that of David? We saw that we see that David drew his support of his subjects and never imposed his will on them. Leaders should never betray the oath of loyalty they make to serve faithfully after taking office. David was called for his great anointing when he was looking out keeping the sheep. David simply did his job and was faithful in small things and what his father told him to do. Now, keeping the sheep took a special heart. It also required special care. It meant you knew how your sheep needed the care and the help of a good shepherd. You learned that you are a sheep and God was your shepherd. Keeping the sheep also meant you had to trust God in the midst of danger and uncertainty. David was a great man and a great king over Israel because he never lost his shepherd's heart. David shepherded Israel according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. And we also need to look out for gratitude as we choose, as we support the right candidate. David also thanked God for every success or favors he received from God. Leaders should be careful not to boast over their personal achievements. It is God who gives such success. And so as we, con we conclude, will you take time to seek God's guidance in ensuring you support the right candidate? 
Will you restrain from making judgment based on outside appearance and go beyond vain political rhetoric and instead evaluate your candidate based on the qualities that we have learned from David? May the Lord help us to support the candidates who have a heart for him. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you could give us an opportunity to participate and engage in the political affairs of that which you have created our nation, O oh Lord. And so, Father, as we determine and purpose to support the right candidates, Father, we pray for your guidance. Help us to look beyond the physical. Help us to seek you, O oh Lord, and to seek your guidance, Father, that you will help us to support the right candidate, the candidates who are after your heart, the candidates who will submit to your authority, O oh Lord, and the candidates who will have shepherd hearts like that of your servant, David. Thank you once again for this day, Lord. We commit the rest of the activities for the day into your hands. May your presence be with us. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.